without strutting that wisdom. It makes her full of feeling without excessive sentiment. In short, she's a heartbreaker of a realist. <laughs> <laughs> by its world of owls, ducks, blackberries, fish, and sewing. I cannot tell you how happy it made me to encounter the word rickrack. <laughs> that one word, the maison zen of that particular poem, grandmother and granddaughter poem, gave me back my own grandmother's late in their lives. Those rich, rich lives reduced to a room and a box of wonders. Helen's impulse is toward the compendium She's a collector of the world, its surfaces, materials, textures, its hidden stories. Now this made me all think about a fantastic essay um, that Virginia Woolf wrote about the English poet Christina Rossetti. And I haven't got the direct quote, but <coughs> Woolf suggested that Rossetti was alive to the miniature. And I think of Helen's doll's poem here, doll's house poem here. And also, Woolf believed Rossetti was alive to the world of furred and skittering things. And I certainly feel that spirit abroad in this collection, all those creatures given their own lives and even inhabited in many of these ponds. And the last thing I would say, and maybe you can relate to this if you know Helen well, um, is that, and it's just a, it's a hunch on my part, is that Helen, in Helen's book, there's quite a few scenes of quiet rebellion, sometimes acted out, Sometimes imagined. <laughs> We're in a moment, right here and right now, that needs more than just a, a few quiet rebellions. And reading, I believe, can be its own quiet rebellion. So you know you need this book. We all do. I want to declare Art of Shadow launched and to once again congratulate Helen for the electricity in her lines when they travel far and light up many readers. To Helen, to Sunline, and all the hard work put into our art and shadow. Please raise your glasses.
out just a couple of words. And it was just in pencil down the bottom, and he'd say, poor. <laughs>
In autumn, windows open to sparse sheets of rain, trains tooting down the rain pipe track, an invisible meander ready to take off, or the quiet trip, trip, trip of a quarter turn faucet. The night's crowded temple songs, Christmas beetles ticking inventory, cicadas rustling out of prayer, crickets never subtle, never whispering, hiding the roof like contraband. Rain, rain on the roof, shouting the retro, or teasing out the silence of its own. Two, you're curiously wide awake when it rains in a trance of language, a verbal art. The sky rumbles overhead, unleashes its mission to swallow the veranda porch and fernery hole. You grope in the dark for the alphabetic order of bed lamp, door latch, raincoat, umbrella, yellow cord to unravel canvas warnings. You're more versatile than in the <coughs> Feeling lucid, you're looking for that elusive word, imagination. Awake and soaked in night's vision, gum boots squeak on concrete path. A lexicon louder than an illuminated sky. You go through all the motions, conscious that the family are bodies under thick sheets. The rain is heavier than the weight on your eyelids. You've reached that point when you hallucinate. Bed covers strangling neck, legs, and feet. The situation can be decoded in one rapid eye movement, in one disappearing act through drains. That final trickle to a sizzle morning heat and last turn of the August tap. <coughs> <coughs> now, this one is from our uh, adventurers. <laughs> and my son, I don't know this one. Sorry, Andrew, you were there. I call it um, Long Ride Handsome Land. Um, it's actually Hansel Park now in Cirque in Germany. We enter this watery kingdom, the yippie kaye of the West with its replica log house, smokestack, a log flume that sprays into sudden bursts. Laughter runs amok as we glide along narrow canals, sense the air change as the bow opens as curved waves, symmetrical wings. With each thump and twist, our children shriek at possible horizons, strike sparks of water that take us to cloud, conifer, and ridgeback hill. In minutes, we are beyond the lattes, souvenirs, and gingerbread men, pausing over Serbstorf, Luneburger Heide with neatly clipped hedgerows, tulips, the purple hills of Spilzer. Hamburg is in miniature beyond with its shoebox houses, Lisa's families. At the summit, the log ascends and the world falls away. White plumes so brightens on either side. And in the distance, the roller coaster approaches concert level, our boy rattling the way off the thumb. In this moment that passes so quickly, like a German summer, our children shimmer with tiny droplets from an avalanche of foam. And when we alight, another ride is necessary. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really write about one that they went on a roller coaster in uh, Hansel Land, and uh, they came up very white looking. <laughs> The swell, a science of storm and debris, 
Good pickings for having fish. High on granite, he adjusts his style. A gang of muleys set to swing. He will move, he will move to a rock platform, unmanned, the rod walking with him. The fish suspended, like his life suspended. The man inside the boy, the boy who will later charter boats on weekends where fish will be the way of conversation. For now, above his life, an arc is thrown. The line finding its opening in water. His hands ratcheting back and forth until the jerk, the surging run, moving us to jump rocks to the whirly gig of tackles spinning dark bodies of fish, breaking the surface. Too large tailor brought closer to his determination, our joy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 